Hi, today I want to talk about the three things that would indicate that your watch is pretty much a piece of jewelry. And I also want to talk about why that's a great thing and we should embrace this idea. Hi, I'm Pete McConville. Welcome to my channel. And if you like talking about watches, overanalyzing, overthinking, and basically just doing way too much intellectual work on watches, this is the place for you. Today, I want to talk about the three signs that your watch is, in fact, a piece of jewelry. I'll be honest, this wasn't something I was in love with. When I started this channel and then an Instagram page to kind of go along with it, I was struck when Instagram made me like, choose like what kind of category my page would fall in and the only one they gave me was jewelry and I I'll be honest I kind of pushed back against that now with a bit more sort of runway behind me I think this is a good thing but first off let's talk about three signs that your watches are in fact jewelry the first is that they're mechanical ever since the the quartz watch was created, especially after it became cheap and easy to access during the 70s. And let's just put a line in the sand and say post-1980. The obviously best way, the obviously cheapest, most reliable, most trustable, most dependable, the really only sensible way for anyone that desperately needs to know the time to do so was to use quartz. And nothing's changed since then. That is still the case now. If you, there are lots of great reasons why you might want to have a mechanical watch. You might connect with the history of the mechanical watch. You might love being able to flip it over and see those parts moving um, through a, a case back. You might connect with the craft of some little man in, in Japan or Switzerland or Germany slowly working away at the mechanical components. Those are all great reasons to really connect with a mechanical watch. And they're really just the reasons you would enjoy jewelry. None of that's got anything to do with the actual fact, the actual process of telling the time. The truth is nothing is better at telling the time than quartz. And if you're not using quartz, you've probably got a piece of jewelry. The second thing I would say that is a really good indicator that your watch is a piece of jewelry is that you care deeply about the bracelet. You know, you care when you're watching a review or a critique, you're quick to look at, is it a stamp or milled clasp? Is the, is, are there lots of micro adjustments? Is there an on-the-fly adjustment? How well does it integrate with the, um, the case? All that sort of stuff. The truth is a bracelet is not a watch part. It's an accessory. It's one that's easily changed. There are lots of alternatives for it. Um, lots of cheap and easy alternatives that you can get, and they're quick to swap out. Now, some of you are probably yelling at the at the screen right now. Yeah, but Pete, that's not, you've got to understand, they don't look as good. They don't feel quite as nice. They don't respect, you know, the, the artist that is the watchmaker, you know, and what their intent was. You know, a Rolex should be on a bracelet. And I agree with everything you said, just like a diamond should be on a ring. They're all reasons that a watch is jewellery. The band has no contribution to telling the time. You can easily swap that band or bracelet with pretty much anything else, and that watch will do exactly the same job in telling the time. The only things that will change will be the way it looks to you, the way it feels to you, the way you connect with it and its like place within the watch world, all of which indicate your watch is jewelry, not at all. The last example, there's probably many more, but the, the last or the third one I'm going to talk about today is really if your watch is made from anything other than plastic. The truth is in the 21st century, a bit like quartz versus mechanical movements. Today, we know that plastic is far and away the most sensible thing to make your watch out of. 
it's cheap, reliable, easy to produce. It will, it's, um, you can make it recyclable. You can make it um, non-allergenic. You can make it pretty much anything you want. Um, and there's really no reason to use anything other than plastic. That plastic watch will certainly be able to survive easily anything that your body can. So if, you know, <laughs> there's a question there about what's the point of making a watch that can, like, survive a bigger hit than you can. The truth is there's lots of reasons why you might want to make a watch out of steel or titanium or ceramic. You can get really nice finishes. You can get uh, really nice angles. You can get nice sharp edges on things that you can't get with plastics. You can get a nice feeling of heft. You can get a sense that this is something that has a life longer than you. You can give the watch specs that... Uh, a plastic watch perhaps can't achieve. Certainly your body wouldn't achieve them either, but that's okay because it just feels nice that the watch can do so. And everything I just said about feels and looks and that sort of stuff indicates your watch is jewelry. Now I understand what I basically said is if you've got a watch that's anything other than a G-Shock, it's probably jewelry. And I suppose that's where we do end up. If you look at the people who today in 2021 or 2022 it is um, actually wear their watches as tools they're pretty much all wearing g-shocks that tells you something if you're worried about anything else the way it looks the way it goes with your your you know i was about to say uniform goes with your clothing all that sort of thing your watch is jewelry now the reality is that's a good thing. I think we should embrace that idea and go with it. Why? The first one is, in my experience, people who embrace the idea that their watch is jewelry, that everything about it is really an aesthetic choice that is equally valid no matter what it is, those people are nicer to hang with. Those people are better to be with, to chat with. They're Those people the ones who accept that their watch is just has got one function, make me feel good, they never use the word shitter. <laughs> they never crap on other people's choices. They never try, they're not the ones trying to define what's real luxury or true GMT. And I think if you, once you accept the idea that your watch is really just jewelry and what's important to you is no more or less valid than what's important to anyone else, you're just better at this. The second thing is much more internal. Once you allow yourself to accept that you like watches, watches are jewelry, therefore I like jewelry, your capabilities, your scope, your constraints, all of that stuff sort of grows and becomes, it just becomes better. You find yourself being attracted, allowing yourself to be attracted to watches that would, that there's a distance there um, when you're thinking that my watch has to be a tool, my watch has to be functional because that's who I am. Give that up. Realize, I like watches. Watches are jewelry. I like jewelry. Now what might I like? And you'll find that it's like scales lifted from your eyes. Suddenly, there is so much more out there that you can allow yourself to like. You can allow yourself to buy. And it's just, again, not only do you become better at this hobby, but the hobby becomes more fun, more interesting. There are less constraints and more opportunities. So anyway, that's my view. Um, there's a couple of tests. There's probably more, but they're my three tests for whether your watch is jewelry. Um, and that's also the two reasons why I think that embracing the idea that your watch is just jewelry. In fact, I shouldn't say just because that is implying that somehow jewelry is less than a tool. And it's not. Fundamentally, it makes you happy. It brings you joy. What more can you that's that's a wonderful thing. That's a great thing. There is no just jewelry. I shouldn't say that, should I? Anyway, that's my view of being Pete McConville. I give my view a lot on this channel. Interested, fascinated, really want to know what you think? Leave it in the comments below. We'll get into a chat and uh, yeah, we'll see where this goes. 
as I said, I've been Pete McConville, and this is what I do. If this is interesting and you're interested in more of these sorts of discussions, sign on, subscribe, hit the notification button, do all that sort of thing. And uh, I love to see you. I would love to see you guys later in other videos. Bye.